I literally suffer from like book reading inflation in my Sunny Kim cinematic universe. It's like the halo effect, but for books. Hey everyone, it's Sunny. You guys seem to like my last note stem video. Um, so here's me continuing my note stem. Um, if you don't know, I'm Sunny. I just have a lot of thoughts. I literally every single thing in my life ever, if I can like make it into a list, I will do that. And so that's exactly what I do with the notes app on my phone. It's literally a commotion in there. It looks like that one hostel from Les Mis. It's giving master of the house. So I'm just gonna continue dumping my notes. Actually, today I came with kind of a plan. I kind of like keep a running note stock of just like random unpopular opinions. And on top of that, I would also share and react to your guys' unpopular their book opinions. I'm gonna make popcorn. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Apple popcorn. Okay, let's get my first unpopular opinion out of the way. I like burnt popcorn. I like it when it's slightly burnt. I actually like burnt food in general. When it has acrylamide. Also, I literally saved my daily apple so that I could eat it here with you guys. Being a college student is actually like only grocery shopping on the days that students get a meager 10% discount at the grocery store and buying exactly seven apples to hold you over for the week. So you only get one apple a day. I love apples. Guys, comment down your favorite apple. There is a right answer. It's ambrosia. I'm gonna just start by talking about my random book opinions. I only have a couple on here. The first thing that I have here, I just don't pronounce things in my head. If it's like a complicated name in any fantasy book ever, the name of kingdoms, places, sometimes even character names, I just don't pronounce it when I'm reading. I am looking at every single Lee Bardugo book. I don't really know what happens. Like, my mind is so powerful, I literally just skip it. You know what I mean? Like I process it, but I don't like read it. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but when things get like adapted into movies, TV shows, whatever. And people are like so shocked. And people are like, wow, how did you pronounce it? I'm literally like, I just didn't pronounce it. That's an NA on me, not applicable. I know that I can't be the only one that does that. It's all in your head, so you're like lucid dreaming where you can like control your dreams inside your head. It's like lucid reading. Like you can just control what you say and what you don't say. My next opinion, you don't have to justify why you like a book. It's just a feeling. I know that that's rich coming from me when I made a YouTube channel, presumably sharing the reasons why I like a book. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but like, I don't really do a good job. I don't think anyone comes to me and watches me expecting like a nice like sparks no literary analysis, like explaining qualities. Like I'm not even a writer, you know what I mean? Like there's no way that I could like critique that. I know you don't have to be like a master at something in order to do it. You could just be like an Abby Lee Miller type situation. Like, the coach doesn't play the game, you know what I mean? Or like how your single friends give the best dating advice. But I truly like, I just don't think about it that hard. I just like read a book, I enjoy it, and then I read the next book it's just a feeling like the, i feel like you don't need to justify why you like a book or like the specific thing like if you like it you like it and that kind of ties in with my next thought which is you can like one specific minor detail about a book so minor the littlest thing and that could be reason enough for you to say that you love the book or that it's like literally one of your favorite books that's literally all of my favorite books honestly everything else about the book could be like mediocre maybe you even like don't like some stuff about the book but if there's just even like one little thing that you love about the book and that makes you have that feeling that you love that book a lot then you do you don't need to justify yourself or you don't need to like oh you shouldn't because like oh I, for the majority like no 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 it's just a feeling reading is literally just for you so if you like it then you like it girls get it get it and the girls who don't don't for me that little minor detail for a lot of the time it's either a relationship or a character it's completely your prerogative and that also leads me to my next thought which is you don't need to justify or even have a consistent rating system i think a lot of people tend to rate books on like a five star scale i also do that because i just use goodreads i see a lot of booktubers talking about their rating system changing their rating system or like critiquing the rating system a lot of that probably comes from people like getting upset about specific ratings or like it just being so convoluted and like if people misinterpret what your rating is they just want to like defend their book or something like, i see like why those things happen but personally i honestly don't think that you a you need to even have a rating system i know a lot of people are moving away from that which is totally valid i don't think that i would ever take time to like create a robust rating system for a book because i genuinely don't think that you need to justify how you rate a book or like the system that you use i have the most inconsistent rating system ever because of inflation i've explained this before i literally suffer from like book rating inflation in my sunny kim cinematic universe hyperinflation is real because kind of like the same as a runner high i would just get proud of myself for finishing a book and i'm like oh my gosh that book was amazing it's like the halo effect but for book and i always want to rate it higher or i think it's also fun to look back on your ratings and like try to figure out why you rated something the way that you did <laughs> like i have an apple and i just have stored it in my cheek it's just cute it's like a little walk down memory lane you're like oh i remember when i like love this book so much and i gave it five stars so obvious to me when i look back at like my old book journals even if i don't carry that same amount of obsession for a book anymore i can like so vividly like feel like how much i used to love that book for example one time i looked back at like my very first book journal and it was the first time that i book journaled the darkest minds which is one of my favorite books of all time remember i was going through all my annotations in that book and i genuinely was like looking back at some of them and i was like why did he even highlight this like what even happened in this interaction that made me go like ah! 
and like highlighted because I know that's exactly what I did. I read it and I was like getting butterflies and being like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And I like highlighted it so that I could write it down and like save it in my book journal so I could read it over later. I was genuinely looking through and I was like, what even happened? Like I genuinely don't understand. I genuinely don't know, but like that's how hypersensitive I was and how much I love that book. Oh my gosh, I just think that it's kind of fun. Like it's just kind of cute. I got off track. What was I even talking about? Oh yeah, book rating system. I think that it's not that deep. Just do what's most fun. And you don't need to worry about it being consistent. Yes, like having a standardized scale. I know that the point is to be consistent. For something like books, for your own enjoyment, and like no one is reading those books except for you. So like no one will actually know how you feel after you read it except for you. The point of what makes feelings so fun is that they're really inconsistent. And they're really up and down and really subjective. I honestly think that that's what makes everything so fun. I could find a book that I like and then a book that I don't like and I could rate it both three stars. And what about it? Okay, the next thing that I have here is I can beat my books to a pulp. And what about it? Um, I honestly don't know if this is unpopular. Dog earring pages, breaking the spine, writing in pen ink directly on the pages, highlighting, you know, busting up the title, you know, front cover. Like, actually, these days I feel like it's actually kind of flipping. I think people these days are liking making a book feel really like well loved because then it looks like those books on Pinterest. So yeah, I like it. Oh, I should preface this by also saying that I don't have a lot of books to begin with. So I'm like talking so much about like how much I love like beating up my books and stuff, and it's really Really, like beating up my book i would only buy a book that i really really intend to keep if there's a book and i want to like be able to give it away someday or like sell it or something someday obviously then i wouldn't deface it because then it would like lose its value but if it's a book that i know that i'm just gonna keep for myself or like so that in 50 years i can look back and pretend that i'm the man from treasure island i just want to romanticize my life okay my next thought that i have here is there's a direct correlation between the vividness of my fan casting and how much i enjoy the book you guys definitely know this my first mission when i start reading a book is trying to figure out the perfect fan cast for that book like they don't even have to be actors like it can just be random people like i just need a face because i don't know if i'm like stale bread now i just have a hard time like coming up with faces on my own and i genuinely don't have like the imaginative capacity to just like create a face on my own so i really need help that's why on my pinterest there's all these random nameless male models on there when books get adapted and the casting comes out, i literally enjoy the book so much more than i would have otherwise like it's actually wild how much it influences how much i enjoy a book perfect example is the hating game the hating game i read the book and i loved it so much i enjoyed it i read it in a day and i filmed a reading vlog about it i definitely okay i can't say definitely because obviously i don't know like it would have been a book that i would have thought of dnfing if I wasn't picturing Lucy Hale and Austin Stowell in the role of Lucy and Josh. I definitely wouldn't have fallen in love with Joshua Templeman as much, I don't think, if I wasn't picturing Austin Stowell's beautiful, gorgeous self. There's a direct correlation, actually a direct causal relationship. Like it actually makes or breaks it. It actually could turn like a one-star book into like a five-star book for me. And I like that. I honestly like that. <laughs> My next thought, it's fine to read a book, not understand a lot, and search everything up on the Wikia for it. Dude, I actually used to do this as like a pastime. Like I'm not even joking. I would literally just like go on Wikia and just like read everything. Book series I didn't read, TV shows I didn't watch. I just think that it's fun. I always just scroll down to the section of character profile. That's like the relationship section. Wow, whoever builds these like Wikia profile pages are actually doing God's work because sometimes there do be like paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs about a person's relationship with another character and like every single interaction that occurs between them and i love that i have a hard time understanding a lot of things that happen in like fantasy worlds for example i feel like i miss details sometimes i guess i'm like not an attentive reader anyway i'll fully like miss important details or like just read things that are happening and like not really like it doesn't really sink in or like i don't really understand all and that's like completely fine i think and i think it's equally fine to then search up what happened after the book i do that all the time it's actually resourceful okay those are all the random book opinions i have let's go look at the opinions that you guys sent where is it what where is it sit down and rose go oh yeah i found it okay first unpopular opinion shadow and bone isn't really that good i would agree with that i don't think it's that good six of crows on the other hand that's a game changer in my opinion you should just read six of crows without reading the original trilogy someone said series are so bad like a standalone is always the way to go Ooh, that one's spicy what do you guys think okay i think that standalones are difficult because i like to read books because of relationship and the slower the burn the better hard to do with a standalone on the other hand though series do be a large commitment there's like just more room to go wrong in the series but all my favorite books are are definitely series i think that duologies and trilogies are like where it's at i feel like that's like the bare minimum to like get a good like a satisfying slow burn um, but it's also not too much of a commitment but i think that in general i do like series but if i love a series then i will love a series like normalized food stays on books sometimes be hungry i agree with this so much because i exclusively read while eating 
entire meals. Literally all of my, my physical books that I had from like middle school are hella stained and like look nasty and have like crumbs in the dip in the spine, you know what I mean? I agree with this statement. Oh, someone said, I don't like Heartless, but I love the other books by Marissa Meyer. I kind of agree with this because Marissa Meyer wrote the Lunar Chronicles. Oh, wait a second. She also wrote Instant Karma though. Oh. Instant Karma like doesn't exist. Like it's actually not part of the Sunny Kim cinematic universe. I really like the Lunar Chronicles. I mean, I really like the middle two books, but I remember trying to read Heartless and not jiving with it. Someone said, you don't have to be a young adult to prefer YA. You can be in college and still prefer YA. I agree with this because I'm in college right now and I still read YA. I don't think that age, age genres, like YA middle grade adult, I don't think that that means that you have to be that age to read it. I just think that it denotes like a specific, specific topics and specific kinds of writings and also like character ages. Like I feel like that's the only thing that it's relevant for. So for example, I find that YA books talk a lot more about issues or relevant to topics are really important about like identity and self-development. You know, things like racial, sexual, or other types of identity. So many stories about self-exploration are written for YA audiences. The truth is that identity development is like so ongoing. Times where you need to read those kind of stories could happen at any point in your life. Middle grade books, I feel like, has a lot more focus on lessons about morality, friendship, family, because those things are such crucial pillars um, for younger audiences. But those things are gonna always be important no matter what age you are. So if you wanna read books that really focus on that, then you can read middle grade. Classics are overrated. I don't know actually, I don't have a big opinion about classic books. Yeah, I don't really have a big opinion on them. I don't really feel strongly against or for classics. Like it just seems like another genre of books to me. I don't like that there seems to be like an elitist attitude sometimes for classic enthusiasts. Not all people, but I don't appreciate like the elitism. Like you're only a true reader if you've read this, 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 and this classic. I don't really agree with that. And also recognizing the fact that the greatest classics of today are globally are considered to be classics that are very just from Europe, very Eurocentric. So in that way, I think that classics are not representative of the greatest books. Like I don't think that that's true because it's only representative of like the greatest white books. So I don't understand the Colleen Hoover hype. I didn't either until I read some of her books because the way that she writes is really enthralling. Like it's very addictive. I just know that once I start a Colleen Hoover book, I literally can't do anything else until I finish that book, which is why they're so dangerous and which is why I've been putting off reading her newest book. Next it says a lot of book talk books are not good. I kind of refrain from saying if I think a book is good or bad. The only time that I will say that, that a book is bad is if I think it's genuinely problematic and like violent towards specific groups of people but everything else is so subjective one of my pet peeves is like people shaming other people's book taste such a big pet peeve of mine it's a bigger pet peeve of mine because i used to do this and now i'm like that was actually so silly of me like literally who cares like a person's book taste is so preferential like it's so personal and there's no rhyme or reason for it a lot of the times too that i think that it's just like what's the point you know what i mean oh my god i've been filming for so long okay also in conclusion whatever books that you like on book talk whether or not it's a book talk book or not i think that it's valid to like it but there's a lid for every pot except for if that pot is so problematic oh, vampires are kind of boring but every urban fantasy has one where Werewolves are much more interesting. I actually don't like vampires or werewolves in books. Like, I don't think that I'll go out of my way and get excited about reading vampires or werewolves. Genuinely, like, I don't find it that interesting. Oh, also, like, mortal and immortal relationships stress me out. Hardbacks are better than paperbacks. I'm neutral, because like I said before, beggars can't be choosers. I think I like paperbacks, though, because they're more malleable. I could fit it better in my backpack. I think that's gonna be all for this video. But yeah, thank you for submitting your unpopular opinion. Um, make sure to follow me on my Instagram, at Reads because I put up question stickers and stuff like that. Maybe you guys could be in one of my videos. Video. So but yeah, I think that's gonna be all. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Press the notification bell if you want to be notified every single time that I upload. All my socials are always in the description. And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.